If you would come after me, you must deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. Far be it from me to glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you would save your life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you will save it. Far be it from me to glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. For what shall it profit you to gain the whole world and lose your own soul? Far be it from me to glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture appointed for the epistle is written in the 53rd chapter of the prophecy of Isaiah, beginning at the third voice. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of, of us all. Thanks be to God. Remember not, Lord, our offences, nor the offences of our forefathers, neither take thou vengeance of our sins. Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood, and be not angry with us for ever. From all evil and mischief, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from thy wrath and from everlasting damnation, Good Lord, deliver us. From all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and all uncharitableness, good Lord, deliver us. From fornication and all other deadly sin, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh and the devil, good Lord, deliver us. From lightning and tempest, from plague, pestilence, and famine, from battle and murder, and from sudden death, good Lord, deliver us. From all sedition, privy conspiracy, and rebellion, from all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart, and contempt of thy word and commandment, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and circumcision, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation, good Lord, deliver us. By thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost, good Lord, deliver us. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our wealth, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, Good Lord, deliver us. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for thy holy church universal, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth, and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings 
and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. The Holy Gospel is written in the 19th chapter of that according to St. John, beginning to read at the third verse. Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews, and they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him, and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard them what was saying, he was more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to, pu to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from henceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was preparation of the Father, and about the sixth hour. And he said unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate, Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him on either side and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priest to the Jews to Pilate, of the Jews to Pilate, write not the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said therefore among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lot for it, whose it shall be, that the, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. 
Now there stood by the cross Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews therefore, because it was preparation that the bodies could not remain on the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his leg. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith there came out blood and water. And he saw it bear record, and his record is true, and that he knoweth he said true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again another scripture, scripture saith, They shall look on him who they pierced. Saviour of the world, Lord Jesus, Son of God, stir up thy strength and help us, we humbly beseech thee. 
by thy cross and precious blood thou hast redeemed us. Save us and help us, we humbly beseech thee. Thou didst save thy disciples when ready to perish. Hear us and save us, we humbly beseech thee. Let the pitifulness of thy mercy loose us from our sins, we humbly beseech thee. Make thyself known as our Saviour and mighty Deliverer. O save us that we may praise thee, we humbly beseech thee. Draw near from the throne of thy glory, look down and hear our crying, we humbly beseech thee. Come again and dwell with us, O Lord Jesus Christ. Abide with us for ever, we humbly beseech thee. And when thou shalt appear with glory and great power, may we be made like unto thee in thy glorious kingdom. Almighty God, we beseech thee graciously to behold this thy family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was contented to be betrayed and given up into the hands of wicked men and to suffer death upon the cross, who now liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. This is David Kossoff's a creative reimagination of Jesus after he's been condemned to death, as seen by the soldier who arrested him. Surprised at feeling no resistance from the prisoner, I turned to look at him, but like a fool, happened to glance at his eyes. How I wish I hadn't done that. How I wish I hadn't seen his eyes. I had to turn away from him. We Romans are a hard lot, but I could not stand to look at his face. I brought many criminals before Pilate in my year here at Jerusalem and didn't flinch for a moment. But this prisoner had me baffled from the start. I dragged him into the Praetorium's main hall and felt no resistance from him. It was as if he was coming with me willingly. But how can this be? Look at him. Even with that ridiculous crown of thorns on his head, there is nothing of the martyr in him. Why isn't he resisting me? I'm so used to their hatred and anger, it slips right off me, leaves me untouched. But this one, the strange thing is that he too is a Jew. Yet there is no arrogance in him. This is the funny thing. Scary to tell you the truth. I heard someone whisper that he really is a king in disguise. Oh yeah, I said, that will really go over well with Pilate. And Tiberius will love it. Imagine hearing that a Jew is a secret king. So I laughed it off. What else could I have done? But then the fates cursed me. 
And I turned to look at the prisoner's face to see why he was making it easy for me to drag him to Pilate. He was exhausted by then. I could tell he had been up all night, dragged from one hypocrite to another. First Caiaphas, then Pilate, then Herod, and back to Pilate. I hate all of them for making us do all the work to make them rich and powerful. So when I turned to look at the prisoner, Jesus, they call him, I expected to see the same hatred in him. I hadn't heard anything bad about the man, so I figured he must be really furious to be treated so roughly. And that was my mistake. I turned and he was looking at me. His eyes, huge and sad, stayed on me. And at that moment, with a sharp pain that stopped my breath, I remembered my mother's eyes. Love and sadness, I thought. I wanted to turn away to stop looking at him, but he wouldn't let me. He urged his love on me. I couldn't stand it and pushed him ahead of me as rough as I could, and he stumbled for a moment, but didn't fall. He turned round once more and looked at me, and I'm ashamed to say he saw my tears. I look at the crowd, many are out for blood, but one young man has tears in his eyes. I approach him, but he turns away, never taking his eyes off the man, Jesus. I ask him, what is it? about your friend. What is it that makes him so calm, so self-possessed? The young man whispers, He's the only one here who is not afraid. What is it about the prisoner? What? His friend must be right. All of us are trembling with fear inside. No matter that we Romans hold the power. He is the only one 
who is not afraid. My people, what have I done to thee? Or wherein have I wearied thee? Answer me. Because I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, thou hast prepared a cross for thy Saviour. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Because I led thee through the wilderness forty days, and fed thee with manna, and brought thee into a land exceedingly good, thou hast prepared a cross for thy Saviour. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. What could I have done for thee that I have not done? I planted thee indeed my fairest vine, and thou hast become exceeding bitter unto me. For when I was thirsty, thou gavest me vinegar to drink, and piercest with a spear the side of thy Saviour. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, refresh me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Permit me not to be separated from thee. From the wicked foe, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me, and bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee for ever and ever. Amen. Thanks be to thee, my Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits thou hast given me, for all the pains and insults thou hast borne for me. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, May I know thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly, day by day. Amen. John, a poem by Clive Sansom. 
agony to endure this living portrait of his agony. The shifting multicolored mob, two priests in purple, flecks of scarlet balancing the cloak flung back from the centurion's shoulder. And above the heads, the three, pale against thunderous clouds. I seek for words, always my relief, as they were his. That was the bond between us, the poet in us. Others may love his words for what they mean, I for what they are. But now, no words of mine are adequate. I search the Psalms, those Psalms of David that delighted him, learned in his childhood speech, repeated to me at night while the others slept. None reached, he said, the depths of spirit David touched, nor built a surer rock of song to climb upon. I remember, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall still praise him who is the help of my countenance and my God. He hears my thoughts. Lifting his head, he wills his love towards me. His parched lips move with mine. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of my enemy? And seeing him revive and hearing God, the crowd renews its mocking. He saved others, himself he cannot save. For thy sake I have borne reproach, his lips continue. I am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien to my mother's children. For the zeal of thy house hath eaten me up and the reproaches of them that approach thee are fallen on me. For the first time, he turns to his mother, Mary of Nazareth, on her shelf of rock. Woman, linking us with his eyes, behold your son. The voice is effort. Son, behold your mother. His lips part for a new psalm. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Still in the northern form, Eloi, Eloi, none understands but I. To his enemies he calls Elijah. To his few friends he is drowning in despair. Only I know. No, he controls despair by giving shape to it. A mould of words finds in undying beauty assurance that the spirit which gave birth is also deathless. O oh my God, I cry in the daytime and thou hearest not, and in the night season I am not silent. A Pharisee standing near the cross has caught his words and caps them jeering, he trusted in the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him. Ignoring him, my friend continues, the assembly of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and feet. They parted my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Be not thou far from me, O Lord. O my strength, haste thou to help me. 
I follow him through the long psalm to its triumphant climax. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. He gazes at me for the last time. Defeat, defeated. Then aloud, with great expense of power, it is finished. Yes, it is finished. Thirty years of Godhead fleshed in words, words charged with God, raises his head to the clouds, their dark violence, their threat of thunder, repeats once more from another psalm, into thy hands, O Lord, I commit my spirit, and the head drops, jarred at the neck. It is finished. The mob is breaking, thinking of shelter. Women in despair, weeping beyond consolation. But I, his friend, loving no less than they, feel only calm. Peace after victory. For these words echo in my mind and will always echo. The ends of the world will remember and turn to the Lord. When I am lifted up, I will draw everyone to myself. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. 
by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Faithful cross above all other, one and only noble tree, none in foliage, none in blossom, none in fruit thy peer may be. Sweet the wood and sweet the iron, and thy load most sweet is he. We venerate thy cross, O Lord, and praise and glorify thy holy resurrection. For by virtue of the cross, joy has come to the whole world. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me I sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did such love and sorrow meet, all thoughts compose so rich a crown. Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were a prayer and far too small, love so amazing. 